So I'm waiting for me. Yeah. Yeah, right, right. sorry, we're on it back on, right. everybody. <laughs> so welcome back to uh, Fish Pie Hat Times 2. <laughs> right, so now, like I was saying there, I'll go recap it because it might be a bit broken up there. I've boiled my potatoes, they're nice and soft, and I'm going to drain them and I'm going to mash them. I'll show you how to mash and make them nice and creamy. It's a kind of a luxurious fish pie on this one. So I've got my fish, which is poaching the milk, star anise, bay leaves. You can put cloves in there if you want. Uh, you can put the parsley stems as well. And you can add more fish. If you're going to add prawns to this, you're going to do prawns into yours. I would drop them in in the last minute of cooking. I wouldn't add them in before that time. You went with like a chewy prawn, not the best. So what I'll do is I'm going to, while I'm just waiting for this to cook, I'm going to do the base for the sauce. So you could have, so for ours, we're like putting onion in there, put a little bit of garlic, put some dill, we'll put some parsley into our sauce, put probably a little teaspoon of mustard, whole grain mustard in there, and probably put some asparagus in as well. Uh, when I used to make this in the hotels and the restaurants, we used to put fennel in there as well. Again, it's down to uh, taste and preferences. Again, you can have this in uh, strips, you can have this in dice, it depends. You know, how you want it, there's no set way of getting cooking, it's how you prefer eating the food. So what I'm doing this now, just to remind you all for next week, um, we've got a massive um, push on all our weddings for next year. So what we're going to do there is, we're going to cook off from canopies to the three course wedding breakfast to sharing platters. And with our company, we've done over 100 kind of weddings um, over the years. So we're happy to do a question and answer session for couples looking at getting married, any advice we can give them regarding the catering or the, the day itself. We've seen so many weddings. I've got a lot of knowledge there we wish to share with people. So we we'll are speaking to some uh, venue providers as well and have a chat with these guys, see if they've got any information they want to get across that I can deliver to you all as well. Liz said, do you put eggs in fish pie? You it's had this to, conversation. It's funny to say that. Yeah, I spoke to my mum <laughs> earlier today. And uh, she was saying about egg in fish pie. I've never put an egg in a fish pie. Um, I don't know what it tastes like, to be fair. Like a warm egg in fish pie, but obviously people do. So, so obviously, she, does she make fish pie often? Or? Liz, do you make fish pie with egg? So I've got some dill and I've got some parsley here. This will be for my sauce. Asparagus. It tastes lovely, says Liz. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's ready to I'll chop it up and drop it in at the end, or...? Uh, diff different, pe different opinions. Maggie says, yuck, and, <laughs> and Cass says, yummy. Yeah. No, not for me. So I've got some asparagus here. Just dropping the uh, tips in there as well. Like oh, <laughs> Cass said, no, yucky, not yummy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> not good on the egg there. <laughs> yeah. No, not for us. <clears throat> like for ours as well, such as Laura. The fabulous camera lady it does look like prawns, so we can't be putting prawns in ours today. And for the boys as well at home, they won't be wanting this. They don't particularly like fish too too much at first. So we've got a spag roll ticking over in the slow cooker in the last of these boys. <coughs> so I think we'll have a couple of days worth of fish pie. I'm getting a bit more used to prawns now. <laughs> so we have a raclette. You'll have to do a raclette one day. Yeah, yeah, sure. Do. That's a nice uh, family dining mm -hmm. experience, is that one. So uh, yeah, we'll show them to do that. We've got a bit of weird topping as well, which I was shown by my brother years ago, this topping. You put it on shepherd's pie and it's really nice, it's really strange. But I will, um, I'll show you, well, that's the topping you're going to get on this uh, fish pie. So we've got the garlic there. The fish is about a minute away. And again, the garlic, you don't need to have a pure edge and fine cover it up. And get that to the mash now. So that's my base that's going to make my sauce. And you can see the fish there, see how it's starting to flake. <coughs> See that? Just use his fingertip there, see how it's flaking. Don't worry, I'm not going to put my hand in there and grab it out. So, right, potatoes. Mm. Sorry, Liz, you've, you've made a debate on egg and fish pie, so it's alright. She said, oh, forget the egg thing. But it's like <laughs> you've, you've done a debate now on whether <laughs> eggs should be an egg pie. <laughs> egg fish pie. pie. <laughs> right, so, potatoes, you see there, nice and drained, you don't want them too wet. I'm going to put three or four, I'm just going to put four knuckle butter in there. Again, that it's well seasoned. Good amount of salt and pepper. At this point now, a good mashing. Put it on there, scratch that. I know you're going to do there. A lot of people, oops, I'm going to put up my mashing. <laughs> too hard. Yeah, all we're going to do there is get all the lumps out. And it's a bit thinner, I'll probably put a little bit of milk in. Mm -hmm. 
at this point people can put herbs in, can put cheese in, uh, but I'm kind of making out a bit more traditional with the topping. Well, until I put my uh, strange bit on at the end. So again, you can see there, the potatoes are quite creamy. The red potatoes will work really well for mashing. Thin that down with a bit of milk in a minute. Before that, so <coughs> at this point here now you can add your prawns for the last minute if you want it to, you can have sweet corn in there. All we're gonna do is gonna fish out the fish. So how long have you cooked that fish for? Um I'd say about seven minutes, nothing more than that. Seven minutes. It will cook um, a bit more in the oven obviously, but mm. you don't need to cook it for a lot. But you can buy a fish mix which will be smaller piece of the fish um, so it might not need cooking as long but again just and you cook it, all so even if you had prawns in there would you cook it for seven minutes uh, no we were saying put you put the prawns in at the very end right the last minute so i've got the star anise now so i'll take this star anise out and take the bay leaf out and all i'll do now is just crumble it down a bit and that's it i'm not putting any seasoning at the moment i don't need to i'm going to season my sauce so if you look at that there that's my base for it Okay, now the cooking liquor. <coughs> so the cooking liquor now, I'm putting that into my jar, into my jug. I'm keeping the same pan, which is all good for washing up. So in this, this is how you make a roux. So I've got my good quality butter, which will go in there. And to that, Gonna add my onions, asparagus, chopped herbs, garlic. And what I'll do is I'm gonna saute this off so that just means soften. Uh, so the onions are in glass like kind of colour, transparent. Okay. Let's get this up a bit more. So I'll wait for that to uh, cook and go back to the mash. So you see the mash there? It's nice, but it's a little bit too thick for a topping. So I'm gonna thin it down slightly. It'll take a bit of milk with this. You can add olive oil if you wish to, uh, you can have a lot more butter if you wanted to, but you can put a bit of milk in ours. So don't be throwing it everywhere, just try and get to the bottom of the pan and just work it around. You want it so it's workable, um, so that you can actually, it's easy to top the fish pie. And I see one is all big lumps and it's it's gone cold. So the idea is doing this process is to Obviously do it in one hit, so you make your fish pie, make your salt, pour it over, add your mash straight away. Some people would have, at that point when I had my milk, would have put a corn flour mix into there. <coughs> and I would just stick in that and pour a little bit of sauce over the fish, then the potato on top and that would be it. I thought I'd show you the uh, kind of traditional way of doing it. <coughs> I did a bit of research on it, it was saying it was from uh, 1100 fish pie kind of thing, um, originated. And it was from down Cornwall area, um, area sorry. I think it was Henry the First. You know all about your kings and queens, but... First? Yeah, Henry the First, I'm sure it was. Well, it must have been the first. <laughs> yeah. Right, so you see there, got a nice base for this sauce. So what century was Henry the First in? 1100, is that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, they said, the computer said. Yeah, the computer said. <laughs> yeah. mm. So I put a bit of flour in. At this point, you need to have a, if you've got a gas um, stove, turn it down slightly. You don't want to be burning the flour. Um, but this is our rather right? decent heat. And what the flour will do with the butter, it'll make a roux. I've actually hear that all the time, all the time. It's just a thickening agent. So what I'll do is, I'm going to have my stock a bit at a time and it will thicken. Um, as more liquid comes mm. in and as the, the gluten pops in the flour, that causes the, uh, the sauce to thicken. Little tips there. Right, so at this point now... And that's, gonna... that's the stock that you cook the fish yeah, in? Yeah, so there's the, the, the milk here <coughs> that yeah. I use. So you can't throw it all in one go, so you add a bit at a time. Oops, now you put some of the stove. It's like a milk fish facial mm. then. I'll be in the shower after this. Actually, your house smells after this, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, if you did it, <laughs> we smell haddock. I think we did it, I don't know what I think we made a kedgerin, was it? Kedgeri, yeah. Yeah, the house stunk for ages. Um, <laughs> well, we lit candles, don't we? Yeah. yeah. And then uh, some girlfriend came around once and they put lobster in the microwave, that's done in the microwave. Mm. Uh, 
a long time. Natalie, Natalie's on actually. <laughs> Natalie, you yeah, did that. <laughs> that might be a for ages. So, yeah. <laughs> so you see there, I'm not pouring all the milk mix in straight away. I'm doing it at a time, gradually adding it. And I'm stirring it round. So it's going to be incorporated in there. Again, the, the gluten in the flour will be popping in there. And that's what allowing it to thicken to create a sauce, a nice base. I would say it's about a pint and a half of milk that I started with on this mix. Is everyone following it so far? Kind of easy ish. No, any questions on lumps? Yeah. So that'll probably be about the kind of consistency I'm looking for. I don't want to go too thin. So it needs to sit on top of the fish, well, in the fish, and the potato needs to sit on top of that. So what I'll do now is I'll turn this right down. That's quite a lot of liquid, isn't it? Yeah, you don't have to put all this in, you see. So what I'll do is probably put half in and then I can serve a bit of extra sauce on top if I wish. So I'll make it a bit more luxurious. Put a mm. little drop of cream in there. And then another little pinch of the whole grain mustard in. Again, like I said in cooking before, it's whatever flavours you like to put in your... Uh, your food. You see, it's like, let's just grab that, it's like a, a risotto kind of consistency there. So, some people now will put cheese in there, parmesan, all that, that kind of stuff, not for us, or keep it this way. You can like everything you do, have a good taste. Right, just need some salt and pepper in. sauce. So now I have my fish mix and my sauce. Again, you've got to be gentle with this. I don't want to be um, breaking all the fish up too much. Just nice smothering. All right, and that's it for your fish pie base. So the next bit now is where the, uh, your plastering skills come into effect. With it being hot and this being hot as well, what I find is if I work from the edges, which you'll see, it won't, the potato won't kind of stick to the sauce. You'll see what I mean when I start doing it. Oh, Maggie said you should be on Saturday kitchen. <laughs> Uh, is that what we're going to do the shuffle? <clears throat> no, that's, why is that? Yeah, oh, that's Sunday brunch, that's so good. Yeah, Sunday brunch, I like Sunday. Yeah, I think they're them two are very good. I think it's a good mix, because obviously one's a chef and one's a presenter. Oh, that's Sunday brunch, I think. Mm. That's candy, I think. So what I'm, you find I'm doing there, I'm just placing it around the fish pie. I'm not squeezing it down, I'm trying to just make sure I've got enough. So I'm finding the holes that need to be filled. So, So, okay. Right, so you've got a nice creamy top in there. Again, you don't need to put a lot of pressure on. People use fork, a fork on this, but I'll show you what I'll do first. I'm using a palette knife. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create a seal like you would with a pie. Just nip it around the edges. This way, you're not going to have a, a messy oven. Such, you're not going to all pour out all over the oven because when it comes up and boils, such, it comes over the edges, then you, you'll have a dirty oven to clean as well as a lot of pots. See there. Right, so you've got the base, you've got mostly fish pie done there. I'm just going to move this stuff out of your way. Just this side in. What I'm saying, keep it lubricated. <laughs> So what you've probably seen a lot of people do when you see fish pie in restaurants is they get the fork and all you're doing there is just pan it down going up. So you're lifting it, so you're tapping it down, pressing up and get actually hurt you up. Or you can do it a certain way, you can put lines in, the lines across, like a kind of lattice. I'll tell you what, we'll do the rest of it like that. Not that you're going to see much of it because we're going to put a crumb top in. 
So you end up with a kind of a lattice effect. All right, this is the uh, the bit now that's a bit interesting that my brother showed me years ago. Uh, again, last year it was for a shepherd's pie, but it works really well with this fish pie. Didn't show me the parsley. <laughs> that's not what it showed me. So on this, we'll put the parsley over the top. And we'll put a little bit of cheese over the top of this. Okay, oaks. Right, and now this is the weird part. Crisps. Yeah, yeah. So what we'll do there is I'm going to break the bag. The air from out. Cheese and onion, salt and vinegar crisps work amazing with this. I don't know why. What's <laughs> it's, what, what flavour there? Uh, this <laughs> salt and vinegar. Don't be putting more too much on there, I don't know what they're saying. So again, cook it up to a kind of a, a breadcrumb kind of consistency. Probably sacrilege for uh, restaurants in salt and vinegar doing this, but absolutely it tastes amazing with the crisps on top. Mm. It's like, best way to describe it, like when you get the dried onions on your burgers, that kind of thing. Um, the kind of intensity of the flavour in such a small uh, piece. Yeah, and that's it. Can you taste this vinegar? <laughs> no. Mm. So there we have it. That's a fish pie. Looks like a fish pie itself. So there's different ways of doing it. You don't have to have the mustard if you don't want. Um, you, don't have, you could have prawns if you wish to on there, but that's the base of doing a, a, a good fish pie. So we'll probably, so we'll put that in the oven 180 for 40 minutes. Again, the fish is all cooked, the potatoes are cooked. All we're doing there is browning the top and warming it up. So you can make this, put it in the fridge and come in the next day and eat it. But thank you very much for watching. So next week is a big push on our wedding kind of catering. You're gonna see, I don't know if I'm gonna do it here or I might do it in the kitchens. Um, so we'll see, we'll decide on that one, depending on weather and internet connection kind of proves a, a bit of a problem at times. But thank you for your support. I hope you enjoy the rest of your night. Thanks again, bye-bye.